Hello and welcome to my talk, 10 reasons your application isn't accessible and what you can do about it. My name is Elise Christiansen and I'm a senior front-end developer in uh, Apia in Sheen. I will just try to get my manuscript on this. Um, there. <laughs> I lean heavily on my manuscript today. <coughs> um, my pronouns are she, her, and for all of those who can't see me today, uh, today I'm wearing a beige blazer and a white t-shirt and brown trousers and some kind of muddy white sneakers <laughs> right now <laughs> because it's raining outside. Uh, in my seven years as a front-end developer, I've seen countless of websites being launched without being properly universally designed. And that is why I have made this talk with this kind of clickbaity title, <laughs> and I'm sorry for that. <laughs> Since this is just a short talk, I will not go hard in on to how to technically solve all these issues. I will just try to get you aware of them and give you a little nudge on how to solve them in a superficial manner. And I have to say that creating a website that meets all the requirements will also improve your SEO uh, performance and make it easier for everyone to use. So it's good for business. Uh, I have to dive a little bit into this dry area of uh, the law. <laughs> And uh, because the accessibility on web has been legally required for years to ensure that all websites and web apps are accessible for everyone. A website that isn't universally designed is just as bad as a building without a wheelchair ramp. The law is called Regulation on Universal Design of Information and Communication Technology. Whew. And this regulation was established under the authority of the 2008 Anti-Discrimination and Accessibility Act, which aims to prevent discrimination based on disabilities. So many words. Now on to something more fun. And you can scan this QR code if you want to read it on Love Data, if you don't trust me. <laughs> my cats. <laughs> These are my cats, Luna and Venus. This cat will follow along with my presentation to give those who are kind of like me, who struggle a little bit with uh, concentration, uh, something to focus on during my presentation. Because studies show that including pictures of cats can help, help you maintain focus for a little bit longer. Uh, so the cat pictures are rarely relevant to the content of my slides, but who doesn't love a good cat picture? <laughs> this is the list, it's very long. so. Uh, we just uh, we should just start. I will begin with some of the more technical issues, and then move along to some more um, structural issues afterward. And uh, you can take a picture of it, or um, I will on every slide uh, I will have this little short link that you can uh, go into and uh, read my whole presentation as a blog post. <laughs> so I just <laughs> I had just published my whole manuscript. Issue number one, insufficient alternative text for images and, er, and graphics. And there you have this uh, short uh, URL down there. A person with blindness or deafness needs to be able to get the same information as everyone else. To detect some of these issues, you can use a scanner. My favorite scanner is Pali. Pali is an open source accessibility uh, testing tool that helps developers and designers identify and fix accessibility issues on websites and web applications. And uh, yeah, that's my favorite tool. Um, but there are so many other uh, accessibility scanners you can use out there. A scanner will be able to tell you if an image or video lack any text alternative at all. But however, a scanner might not be able to recognize if the alternative text provides enough context for the image. I'll give you an example. Uh, an image of a cat that is trying to catch a bird might have the descriptive text, a cat and a bird. But that doesn't say anything about what this image is trying to tell in a context. For an article about birds that are going extinct, the image text might be bird being hunted by a cat. But for an article ag about a cat's behavior, the image text might be cat hunting a bird for fun. It tells you something um, that are relevant to the uh, article it's in. So make sure all multimedia elements and images not only have a text alternative, but that the text also gives away all the relevant information for the context the multimedia is in. 
Issue number two, failure to use available text alternatives for multimedia elements, such as videos and audio files. The necessary types of text alternatives must be carefully considered. Uh, there are various kinds of text alternatives you can include. We have mm, cap ooh, captions. <laughs> uh, videos with sound must have captions so that people with hearing impairments can follow along. And we had transcriptions for audio files and videos uh, must have a text transcription. And the last uh, of the, these alternatives is audio descriptions. Videos with important visual elements must include audio descriptions for visually impaired users. Uh, and again, you can use a scanner to help you catch a lot of the missing text alternatives. Issue number three, missing and bad link text. I just had to take a little bit of water. <coughs> a common mistake is missing or simply just bad link text. A web app or website is mostly full of links that are either taking you to a new page or taking you to another place on the same page. But we as developers have a tendency to put small insufficient uh, uh, small icons or insufficient text like just read more as link text. And how is a visually impaired person supposed to know what more means without having any context? Use descriptive link text for all links. For example, read more about bees for an article about bees and use uh, ARIA labels for icons. For example, go to homepage wrapped around a house icon. A scanner will be able to catch a lot of the missing links, but will not probably not be able to distinguish between a good and a bad link text. Issue number four, inadequate contrast between text and background which can make it difficult for visually impaired people to read your content. And solving this also makes it better for everyone to read your content. Again, you can get help from scanners, and you can also use your browser's inspect tool. The inspect tool in your browser is a very useful tool. Most browsers let you hover over an element and see the contrast ratio right then and there. You can see here that it's the little arrow when you open the console. Um, most browsers have a little arrow in the top left corner uh, that you can use to hover over elements and see uh, the tag, the color, the font, and also this bulk of accessibility information. And there we have a contrast. And on one side, it's a high number, and on the other side, it's a low number. And they even have a check mark and a warning symbol. And the higher the number, the better the contrast. So when you are developing something, uh, just use your inspect tool as you go, so you don't have to use it on the whole page right before launch. Just <laughs> make sure it's a part of um, the developing, developing, the developing process. <laughs> <coughs> but how I uh, remember, uh, text on images and gradients is not that easily caught with just computer tools. Make sure you manually check all the colors in the background of an image up against the text color you have put on top of it. Uh, in this example, I have a good contrast ratio in black and a bad contrast ratio in light blue on a light blue background. And um, I'm not sure everyone even can see what see the text. So yeah. Issue number five. Lack of content structuring with proper use of headings and lists. For assistive technologies to work optimally, the web app needs to be written with the correct tags, especially the right use of heading tags. The different numbers are for semantic structure and not for styling, as so many people use them for. It's important to begin building the web app with the, with the correct tags from the very beginning. Uh, because rewriting it will take time. My best tip here is that every time you want to use another div, just try to think about another tag to use. Use p tags for paragraphs, use nav tags for navigations. HTML is such a rich language if you <laughs> actually deep dive into it. And um, if you are using the correct tags, uh, it will solve so many accessibility issues. Issue number six. Missing keyboard navigation or incorrect focus order, hindering people who rely on a keyboard to navigate your page. One easy way to check your page itself is to use your own keyboard. 
that's the quickest and easiest way to check your page. Just tap through everything and make sure that all elements are logically ordered and accessible. A common mistake is to make clickable elements only reachable by mouse and only clickable by mouse click. So make sure you have used the right HTML tag because they already take care of a lot of the tab navigation issues. And uh, you can use tab index in need. But if you have used the right HTML tag, you shouldn't, be, you shouldn't need the tab index. But that's in need. And now we are moving on to some of the more structural issues. Issue num number seven. <coughs> Inadequate uh, testing with accessibility tools and user testing on individuals with various disabilities. It's difficult to develop for challenges you don't have yourself. When you develop something, you tend to take your own experience as a starting point. And you assume that uh, users of screen readers and assistive devices are experts themselves. But they are not. They use screen readers because they have to. David, a 75-year-old who just started to go blind but has never worked on a computer in his whole life, doesn't have any better prerequisites than you to know how to navigate a screen reader. You are the expert. And if you cannot uh, use a screen reader on your web app, how is David supposed to do it? So set up good testing routines. Use the test on people with disabilities and make sure that the <laughs> Make sure that testing with disability devices is part of the estimate. I'm oh sorry, I had to <laughs> drink some water. <coughs> My uh, throat is a little bit sore. But estimations takes us right to our next issue, lack of accessibility awareness uh, among uh, during the design and the development process. Developers tend to forget about accessibility when they estimate. And when the development has started, it's too late to incorporate it because one may feel there isn't enough time. Take responsibility and focus on accessibility already in the planning process. Make sure every participant knows how important this is. The customer, the designer, the developer, the editor who are going to publish content on the web app. Everyone needs to be on board. However, the fact that everyone wants to focus on it doesn't necessarily mean that everyone knows how to. And that takes us to issue number nine, inadequate training and awareness among developers and designers about the importance of universal design and how to achieve it. I only have one bullet point here, and that is encourage developers and designers to take courses. There are plenty of easily accessible courses out there that can be done in just a few hours of the workday and they are definitely worth the investment. And for our last issue, issue number 10, economics. People believe it's much more expensive than it is to develop for accessibility, so they fall into the trap of using accessibility overlays instead of coding the website universally from scratch. And that's a huge no. <laughs> Don't do it. Design for simpler and cheaper websites. Keep the routines and guidelines in mind and scale down functionality and needs. Don't compromise on accessibility. A black and a white website in Times New Roman with all elements just listed one after the other without any design at all is way better than a website that isn't universally designed because it doesn't exclude anyone from using it. And that was all I had. It went a little bit faster than <laughs> I should, but uh, yeah, that's probably OK. You can add me on uh, socials. This is my sources. And if you want to read the whole presentation as a blog post or article, you can scan this QR code. Thank you very much. <laughs>